Hey guys, in this video, we're going to show you how we got our seats to this point, which is right before they'll be upholstered. So this includes installing the locking mechanism that allows for adjustment, the seat frames themselves, the, the seat bottoms or the seat pans to hold the cushions, and then carving the cushions themselves. We'll show each step in detail. Okay, so the first thing we did was install these lock pins that allow the seats to be adjusted. I believe kits newer than ours now come with an improved seat adjustment mechanism. The first thing I did was attach the lever to the lower cap. Next, I ground the lower washer on the lock pin down to a small enough radius that it would pass through the spring, but left enough that it wouldn't pass through the hole in the cap. To be completely honest, I'm not sure if that's the way it was meant to be installed, but it seems to work just fine. Afterwards, I put the pin through the spring and then the cap and put on a large washer followed by a nut. Then the assembly can be slid into the housing tube. I set the height of the bottom cap to where the top of the pin would be flush with the top of the assembly when the lever was fully lifted. Next, I marked the location of the pin where the seat was fully forward, again with the seat full aft, and then evenly spaced holes between the two points. Later, I found out the designer only intended the seats to travel three and a half inches, so I will be plugging a few of the front holes to keep the seats from interfering with the control sticks. The back seats are held in with four bolts. The fuselage tubing has bushings welded in place and tapped for A and 5 bolts. To start on the seats, we made the seat bottoms the base that will support the foam pads. There are many methods for doing this, but we ended up choosing zigzag springs, just because in one of Tony's books, he said that they might be the best option. I know some people drill two holes and hook the springs through the holes. This was proving to be a little more of a pain than I wanted to deal with, especially since I didn't have a torch to make bending the springs easier. So I bailed on this method and purchased some spring clips. The ones I got were made to go on a flat frame. So I shaped them around a piece of pipe before attaching them to our seat frames. After they were shaped, I attached them to the seat frames. In most places I use screws, but where the front seat backs meet the lower frame, I used pull rivets because truss head screws would have interfered with the lower bar of the seat back. To cut the springs to length, we clamped them to a workbench, marked their length, and cut them off with a cutoff wheel and a grinder. Then we clamped the springs in a vise and bent the loose end around to help keep them in the clips. Once the springs were cut to length and the clips were installed, the springs were just hooked into the clips. We used 11 gauge springs for the seat backs, spaced roughly three inches on center, and the length was cut so they arced up about half an inch. For the seat bottoms, we used nine gauge springs and used five per seat, which resulted in a spacing closer to two and three quarter inches on center. To stretch the heavier nine gauge springs into place, we used a homemade spring stretcher. Once all the springs were in place, we tied them together with some poly twine. 
Before we get into carving the seat cushions, I think it's important that we point out that you can just buy pre-made seat cushions that I think probably work really well and would save a ton of time. The ones I found didn't come with the foam we wanted, and I'd really like a covering material that's more dog hair resistant. For the seat cushions, we chose to use Confor foam, also called temper foam, a type of viscoelastic foam. This stuff has some pretty serious cons. One, it's really heavy. So for a single seat bottom, ours are three layers with bolsters, it weighs three pounds and seven ounces. And for a single seat back for ours, two layers, um, it weighs one pound, 15 ounces. Two, the stuff's hard as a rock when it's super cold. So cold winter morning, definitely gonna have a firm seat, but they do um, soften up as your seat warms up. Three, the stuff's pretty expensive. We paid 230 for enough to do four seats, but we pieced together what we needed from the discount overstock from Dynamic Systems. I think um, if you buy through most other suppliers at full price, you could expect to pay most of that per seat. So that all sounds pretty bad, but there actually are um, some pros that led us to choose this stuff. One, it is flame retardant. Um, it, kind of debated on how important that is, and hopefully we don't have to figure it out, but it is a pro nonetheless. The important one, number two, why, why we really chose it, is because this type of foam has the capability to absorb a tremendous amount of impact shock compared to even high density polyfoam. Seat bottoms are an area that commonly see large force vectors in a crash, hard landings, or even severe turbulence. Given this and the incompressibility of the human spine, we thought that the cons were outweighed by the added protection that they provide. But anyways, we started by rough cutting the seat bottom pieces and gluing them together with upholstery adhesive. We used firm for the bottom layer, medium in the middle, and soft for the top layer. We actually used medium soft in the middle for the back seat because, like I said, we pieced together an order from discounted overstock. After they were glued together, we cut the cushions to final size. We used the bandsaw whenever possible, but some cuts weren't really possible with our small benchtop bandsaw. For these other cuts, I'm told an electric carving knife or a fillet knife works well. Since I don't have one, I went the route of sharpening a long reciprocating saw blade until it was razor sharp. Certainly not a precision tool, but it seemed to work well enough. In spots that I wanted the foam to curve instead of having straight cuts, I used a disc grinder to remove material. I didn't spend too much time worrying about making smooth lines and curves because our seat covers will be lined with scrim foam that will soften out a lot of that stuff. We put bolsters on the sides of the seat bottoms. To cut the bolsters, I ripped strips at an angle on the bandsaw and glued them to the seats. I left the inside of the bevel stand proud by about an eighth of an inch. This offset will be filled with a seam on the seat covers. Our seat backs were made from two layers of soft foam. I wanted to include some lumbar support and largely base the geometry off this random figure I found online. To make the seat lumbar support piece, I used a grinder to shape it. Just in case the random figure I found online didn't suit us, we spent hours sitting in them making sure uncomfortable spots didn't develop, and adjusting the height and thickness of the lumbar support until our seats suited us individually. Once we were happy, we glued the seat back pieces together permanently. For the front seats, I cut the bottom of the back cushion and the aft end of the bottom cushion at angles that would allow the seat backs to fold down still. Then, I traced and cut the outside edge of the back cushion. We made the top cushion for the back seat the same as the front, except the back was left square. The bottom cushion for the back seat had a few differences. The inside bolsters met back to back in the middle. A U was cut out for the seat belts to attach, and the aft end was left straight like the top. 
Then we added spring cover to the bottoms of all the seats. The spring cover is held in place with Velcro adhered to the seat frame and sewn to the spring cover. I worry the sticky Velcro will come off when the plane sits outside on a hot sunny day, so I also tied it to the springs with some heavy waxed thread every couple of inches. All right, I think we're gonna end this one here. Um, we'll do the seat covers in another video. Um, we're making pretty basic seat covers, but the devil's in the detail and there's a lot of details, and so we didn't wanna cram it all into this video. So we'll make it all on its own. Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. Dakota, go get me a beer, bud.